We'll start this lecture by looking at security audit. In general terms, an audit in an organization refers to the independent inspection of organizational records to determine compliance with the standard or policy. More specifically, a security audit relates to the security policies and the mechanisms and procedures used to enforce that policy. The International Telecommunication Union's publication lists out the security audit and alarms framework. It has five objectives for security audit. A security audit is intended to allow the adequacy of the security policy to be assessed, to aid the detection of security violations, to facilitate making individuals accountable for their actions, to assist in the detection of misuse of resources, and to act as deterrence to individuals who might attempt to damage the system. Security audit is not involved directly in the prevention of security violations. Rather, it is concerned with the detection, recordings, and analysis of events. The basic goal of security audit is to establish accountability for system entities that initiate or participate in security-relevant events or actions. So an organization needs to have a way to generate and record a security audit trail and to review and analyze the audit trail to discover and investigate security violations. The International Telecommunication Union's publication provides a model that shows the elements of the security auditing function and their relationships to the security alarms. This figure here on the slide presents the model, which consists of several key elements. Event discriminator is the first element. It refers to the logic embedded in the software of the system that are intended to monitor the system activity and detect security-related events based on the configuration of the software. And the second element is audit recorder. For each detected event, the event discriminator transmits the information to the audit recorder. And the third element is alarm processor. Some of the events detected by the event discriminator are defined to be alarm events. For such events, an alarm is issued to the al alarm processor. The alarm processor takes some actions based on the alarm. This action itself is an auditable event, so it is transmitted back to the audit recorder. The fourth element is security audit trail. The audit recorder creates a formatted record of each event and stores it in the security audit trail. And the fifth element is audit analyzer. The security audit trail is available to the audit analyzer. Based on a pattern of the activity, the audit analyzer may define a new auditable event that is sent to the audit recorder. It may generate an alarm and sends it, and sends it to the alarm processor. And the sixth element is audit archiver. It is a software module which periodically extracts records from the audit trail and create a permanent archive of auditable events. Its seventh element is archives. The security-related events are permanently stored on the audit archives of the system. The eighth element is audit provider. It is an application or user interface to the audit trail. Audit trail examiner is the ninth element and refers to an application or user who examines the audit trail and the audit archives for historical trends, for computer forensic purposes, or for other analysis. The last element is security reports. The audit trail examiner prepares human-readable security reports. When it comes to data to collect for auditing, the choice of what data to collect should be based on a number of requirements. One issue is the amount of data to collect which is determined by the range of areas of interest and by the granularity of data collection. There is a trade-off between quantity and efficiency. The more data collected, the greater performance penalty on the system. When determining the data to collect for auditing, organizations should take this caution in mind. The first order of business in security audit trail design is the selection of data items to capture. The following list here on this slide shows data items that need to be collected. The International Telecommunications suggests the following security events to be audited, and they are listed here on this slide. The list of auditable events should include at least the following items, including deny access, authenticate, 
change attribute, create object, delete object, modify object, and use privilege. In terms of individual security services, the following security-related events are important, including authentication, access control, non-repudiation, integrity, confidentiality, and audit. As a security administrator designs an audit data collection policy, it is useful to organize the audit trail into categories for the purpose of choosing data items to collect. System-level audit trails are the first category. A system-level audit trail is generally used to monitor and optimize system performance. Since the system enforces certain aspects of security policy, such as access to the system itself, it also serves a security audit function as well. A system-level audit trail captures data such as logging attempts, devices used, and operating system functions performed. Application-level audit trails are another category. An application-level audit trail is used to collect security violations in an application or to detect flaws in an application's interaction with the system. For critical applications or those that deal with sensitive data, an application-level audit trail provides the desired level of detail to assess the security threats and impact. For example, for an email application, an audit trail records the sender and receiver, message size, and type of attachments. And the user-level audit trails are the third category. A user-level audit trail traces the activity of an individual user over time. It records user interaction with the system, such as commands issued, identification and authentication attempts, and files and resources accessed. It also captures the user's use of applications. Network-level audit trails are the fourth category. Organizations use network-level audit trails to evaluate system performance and to perform load balancing. These network-level audit trails capture a wide variety of network activities and can also include security-related data such as, such as those generated by firewalls, virtual private network man managers, and IPsec traffic. Physical access audit trails are the last category. Physical access audit trails are generated by equipment that control physical access and are then transmitted to a central host for subsequent storage and analysis. For instance, for car key system and alarm system, physical access audit trails log the data and time of access, monitor and log invalid attempts, and capture information that includes attempts to add, modify, or delete physical access privileges. A sound security policy includes both internal security audits and external security audits. Internal security audits are carried out by the organization itself, typically on a quarterly basis or after a significant security event. The following list here on the slide shows the objectives of an internal security audit. External security audits are carried out by someone from outside, typically on an annual basis. The objective of the external security audit are listed below on the slide as well. A useful guide to developing a security audit program is a family of audit controls defined by the special publication Security and Privacy Controls for Federal Information Systems and Organizations. The controls are designed to be flexible and customizable and implemented as part of an organizational-wide pro process to manage risk. The audit and accountability family consists of 16 base controls. The 16 base controls are summarized below on the slide. The set of controls provides a comprehensive guidance for planning and implementing an effective security auditing function.